Hello, my YouTube friends. Therese Louise here on a Friday afternoon. Uh, not sure what day it is. I mean, the date. <laughs> 16th. Yay. Um, I'm just goofing around up here in my sewing room, and I thought I would pop on, go live, and say hello to all my friends. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Bunches. Um, let me bring my phone up and see who we have here. Hi, Donna. How are you doing? <clears throat> so I was going to give you a update on the fire, and and I'm going to play with fabric. That's what I'm doing. Hi, Laura. How are you today? Hello, Brenda. Oh, hello, Willa. <laughs> Every time I go live, that's what she does. Because she thinks that I'm talking to her, don't you? Yeah, my dog, Willa. Hi, Marie. I'm doing very, I'm doing pretty good. I'm super happy that the smoke is starting to go away. <laughs> I can still see it, but it's not nearly as bad, and I can't smell it, so... Um, hi Beverly. Everybody is saying hello to Willa. Yes. Willa, everybody says hello. <laughs> hi Denise. I guess one of these days I had to bring the camera a little closer so you guys can see her. <laughs> so yeah, it's a surprise. It's a surprise Friday. I was hoping I was going to get some stuff in the mail, but it didn't come so. Hello, Doreen. Um, did I miss it? Oh, hi, June. Almost missed ya. Okay. So, um, we had a bunch of rain, which is really good, because now the fire is smoldering, and it's not making any new progress, you know or you know not not like it was it's still burning but it's it's not as bad as it was and we do have some more rain coming and it looks like it's going to be going right over the fire area so that's great although we're going to get some thunder and uh lightning which isn't always good, but hopefully the ground is wet enough that the lightning won't do anything. And the weird thing is the lightning strikes are going to be right over that fire area. So, you know, um, chances are it wouldn't light anything on fire anyway. And um, no, you did not happen to stumble onto a weather channel. <laughs> I feel like I'm <laughs> doing the weather. <laughs> Which is um, kind of funny because, uh, quick little story, um, I think I was in the sixth grade and um, the teacher, you know, she's very super, super creative and um, she liked us to use our imaginations, I guess. I don't know. She was always doing all kinds of crazy creative stuff and um she wanted us to play like we were um, doing a weather report or some sort of report. So we we had to do a report on something. And I think I picked the weather. <laughs> but you could pick, you know, anything. It's kind of like um, doing an essay in front of everybody, you know. So people picked all kinds of different things, and then she actually filmed you while you were while you were giving your report. <laughs> I was so nervous. Oh my God, I was so nervous. But yeah, I did the weather report. <laughs> I knew right then I did not want to be uh, on, you know, on TV. And here I am on YouTube. <laughs> so funny. Yeah, thank you, Beverly. Hi, Terry. Hi, Mary. Um, and hello, Mary, with an A. <laughs> uh, 
Did I mean, oh, hey, hello, KD. How's it going? So that's my weather report for today. Mm -hmm. Just looking to see how many people we have on. So I just thought I'd come on and visit. Um, say hi to everybody. And I'm going to go through this box of scraps that I have from a um, block of the month. And I'll show you that quilt. You've seen it before, if you've been here before. You thought it was the Food Network? <laughs> um, that's closer to the end of the video, Terry. But yeah, it, we do do food too, so. Yeah, uh, Katie said she's doing good. Happy Friday. So how are the dresses going, Terry? Hi, Laura. Laura with the V. Well, hi, Jim. Haven't seen you in a while. How are you doing, buddy? <laughs> well, I do, we do talk about food a lot on the live chats. Not just here, but everywhere, you know. <laughs> All the chats that I'm in, I we seem to talk about food eventually, right? So... Anyhow, hope everybody's doing good on Friday. Um, Becca goes on, she'll be on at 5 o'clock my time, Pacific Standard Time. So, and I just heard that Tiffany's going to be on with her. I think that's what I understood. So, so Becca and Tiffany's Quilting Life. So, that'll be, that'll be a lot of fun. I'm not sure what they're going to do. Hi, Amy. Oh, Amy's going to pack for the beach. Oh, you lucky girl. Laura, Laura says, Laura Austin says, we in Florida are keeping our eyes, close eye on Tropical Storm Fiona. Oh, boy. Well, my prayers go out to you guys. Yeah, there's Laura, three Lauras, Laura A, Laura M, and Laura B. <laughs> Which, what beach are you going to, Amy? Wanna better be a lady. <laughs> yes, I agree, Terry. Hi, Lisa. How are you doing? Let's see, Terry says, oh my, I made four of those dresses so far. I'm getting better with each one. I think so anyway. Now I'm learning how to make them shorts and bloomers for under the dresses because they need them. <laughs> awesome. When I was a little kid, we wore bloomers. <laughs> we That's where we wore to bed. We had little night shirts and little shorts, you know, like they're bloomers, puffy, right? <laughs> I, I can remember wearing those. And I was a little kid. I don't wear them anymore. I suppose if they had some cute ones, I might, but. Yes, we, not today. Hi, Tracy. Are you going to do the elephant FPP? Yes, I have that coming. I'm not going to do it today. Um. Mm -mm. Um, I'm debating on when to start that because it's that time of the year where, you know, you're, we're all starting to think about Christmas and Christmas projects and trying to get those done. So I don't know if I want to throw an elephant in to that. Um, so I might hold off and maybe start it in January. Not sure yet, unless I get a lot of people saying that they want to do that elephant one. And I'm, um, they have them on Amazon. Um, uh, trying to remember the name. Violet Crafts, I think. And um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it what it's called. And it's the elephant one. 
and I might order a couple of others too but in the meantime I might try I do have some foundation paper piecing papers from uh, the sew sampler box and I'm thinking about doing one of those maybe kind of like a scrappy quilt first before I take on the elephant because that elephant now I've not done I've only done foundation paper piecing one block I gave it a try a couple of years ago and actually I might have you know I might have made two or three blocks but it was a block that I could make without papers and so I'm like I don't want to do this whole quilt with papers because it's just going to take more time you're going to have to rip out all those papers it's a block that you can make without why why bother <laughs> you know so that was my mindset now and that's how I kind of feel about paper piecing if it's something that I can do without using paper then I would rather do it that way um, but that elephant you're definitely it you definitely have to do paper piecing on that so well hi Donna how are you doing hello Vivian hi Joe hi Katie hello Cindy I live in northern Idaho um, uh, yeah Becca's live starts 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time um, that would be 8 o'clock um, Eastern time so looks like here I saw some pictures of you guys at your um, retreat looked like you girls were having fun so hi Kim how are you doing did you get my message on Facebook <laughs> let's see if I missed anybody else Okay, there's um, Tracy's message about the elephant quilt. So that's what I'm kind of thinking about. Um, and if I do do something uh, paper piecing and you guys want to join me on that, you're more than welcome to. And I'll try and give you a heads up of what, you know, what I'm going to make. So you can get the papers too. I can't remember all the, I think I have like... Um, I have a few different kinds of paper piecing that I got from the Fat Quarter Shop. Um, one is the pineapple quilt, the pineapple block. Um, and I can't remember what the other ones are. I Because when I get those from the Fat Quarter Shop, I usually give them away. <laughs> when they come in the sew sampler box. Hi Shauna, how's it going? Laura, Laura V said, I'm the same way about paper piecing. I know there are some beautiful patterns out there, but it's just another step and it's messy with all that paper. I agree. I agree. So that's why I say I'd rather, uh, if I'm going to use paper, I want it to be on, on something complicated, <laughs> right? And then you really got to think. <clears throat> oh the snail trail yes thank you Marie I do have the snail trail that and that one's a smaller block the pineapple one is pretty big so maybe do the snail trail that might be fun hi Patty how's it going Kim is feeling better today. Awesome, Kim. All right, so that's kind of where I am on that idea. But yeah, that snail trail might be a good one. And I, I might be able to use these scraps for that. Hmm. Well, I'm going to go through this tote here and kind of 
see what I have left over from this quilt. And this was the block of the month with my local quilt shop. It was the summer song it was called and it looked like this. And the fabric was just oh beautiful, beautiful. And it's it's done, it's hanging up. <laughs> Oh, I didn't think they gave me the binding, but here it is. I left it with the quilt. It's this quilt here. I'm not going to um, take it all apart because, you know, it's it's fraying enough, you know. And the more you mess with it, the more it frays. So, yeah. I don't really want to take it off of there, but... And it's, um, I think it's 90 by 90. And then this is the fabric for the binding. So. I wish I'd get my batting. <laughs> so I can start getting some of these done. All right. Oh, good. Kim, I'm glad. All right, so here are all of the instructions. So if I ever want to make any of these blocks again, which I might want to, because there are some pretty cool ones, I'll have the instructions. Like, and the blocks are pretty big. They're 22 by 22. I mean, heck, you could do that into a wall hanging, right? This one here. That would be a really cool wall hanging. So I'm just going to save these. Because, you know, why not? I paid for them. Yeah, I could do, or like a zigzag stitch around it. That might help too. Um, but it, I do have the last border on it, but when the best thing to do when you're done and before you um, quilt it would be to do like a stay stitch, especially if you have a lot of um, seams because you want to, you know, make sure those seams stay closed. The ones on the end, edge, you know, where your borders are. And, um, but if it's going to be a while, like if you have space, I like to hang them up in the closet. Um, and I make sure that the seams are on the inside when I fold it. And so the pretty side of the fabric is on the outside. That way, when I'm going in the closet and messing around, I'm not rubbing up against the seams and making it worse. So that's how I, um, fold my quilt tops. Mm -hmm. Oh, KD said that she is doing the snail trail quilt in blues for her spare bedroom. Already have blue curtains. Oh, that'll be really pretty. Mm -hmm. So, all right, so I'm just going to, I have a lot of fabric left over with this, and I'm going to just pile it all in uh, like, I mean, there, there's quite a bit, and I have some big pieces. Like, I could save this piece to put into the back. And um, it's actually double that because I have this folded on this end. And I think this would fit somewhere in the back of the quilt. So I might save this piece for that. That would look kind of cool. 
or there's enough here probably for an, um, a border to whatever I'm going to make here, right? So I don't think I'll cut that up any smaller. Okay, blues. <laughs> and I have a whole bunch of half square triangles. So I'll separate those out. I'm, I've been pretty amazed with how much extra fabric that I've gotten in these last two block of the months. Pretty surprised. I mean, I think I paid $22 a month for this one. And if I end up with two quilts, then it definitely would be worth it, <laughs> the price, right? Wow, I got quite a bit of this dark blue. Lots. Okay. So I didn't throw. wonder why I have a pin on that. <laughs> Glad I found that before I got stuck. I'll put that with that. This one's a little bit different, but pretty close to the same. So what do you guys do with your scraps that you accumulate after your project's done? Do you make another quilt, another scrappy quilt, or does it depend on how much fabric you have left? Like if I had barely any of this left, I would just put it in with all my other scraps. But since I have so much, I can, I think I can get another quilt. And so that's what I want to see, just how much I mean, look at this piece. This is a pretty big piece. I mean, that's like a um, about as much as a fat quarter. All right. And I know, I mean, there are tons of half square triangles. So I'll have to add that somehow. And then, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna have enough white, but, hi Lois, hi Maureen. Um, go through my other white scraps. Um, that's what I tend to do if I'm making a scrappy quilt like this. I will, instead of cutting new white fabric, I'll just grab my white scraps and just cut them all up because I usually use um, a white on white for my background and, and sometimes a solid white, but I, I prefer a white on white or cream on cream and so I just, you know, go through all of those and cut out what I need from those scraps. And if I have really small pieces like this, I'll put them in the scrap box or, you know. Terry said, I saved scraps for about six months. I just sew them into scrappy blocks. I got 17 two and a half blocks and two 12 and a half by 24. Wow. Haven't sewn them together yet. Still deciding. Yeah, one of one quilt or one quilt I did that was scrappy. I just did like, um, you know, uh, what do you call it? Strips, scrappy strips. And then I just kept making them big until I got them to the size I want. I can't remember what size I ended up with. Maybe 10 inch square, something like that. 
And then, so then I just made sure they were all the same size. Amy says, I've been keeping my scraps for each project to make a quilt. One block for each project to kind of create a memory, memory quilt. Otherwise, I trim the scraps down and place in scrap bins by size. Hi, Sean. How are you doing? Yeah, that's what I do too, Amy. Amy said, anything half an inch and under an inch goes into my crumb bin. That's what I was trying to think of the word, crumb bin, for random mindless crumb piecing. <laughs> Sean said he just got off work. Um, and then sometimes if I don't have enough of these scraps left over to like, make, you know, make a whole quilt, or even a lap size quilt would be good. I might make pillows to go with the quilt. So that's always good. You know, that's always really cute. Especially for like baby quilts. I usually make a, a little pillow to go with a baby quilt. Let's see. These are all crumbs. Hi, Sheila. Also, I have all my scraps from batting and use seam tape with them. That's another thing I need to do is um, sew some of my batting pieces together. Brenda makes pillowcases. Yeah. Oh, Kim must be talking about food. <laughs> Canned peaches. Oh, yum. I bet they do taste good. You got a day tonight, Sean? Awesome. So what I'm going to do with my batting pieces is Put my other sewing machine here that does a zigzag, and then I just zigzag those together. So. Going to the Crafty Crab in Lakeland. <laughs> I'm not sure what that is, but... Oh, that sounds good, Amy. Amy's waiting on a pizza. So here we are. <laughs> We're in the food. We're doing the food network now. <laughs> I'm going to look for, let's see. Um, I think it's pretty much the same, Sean, what we're talking about, blocks. Scrappy, crappy. Oh, wow, Kim, that sounds good. Um, sounds like you got a little bit of your appetite today. She said she ate a good supper finally. Leftover pizza and salad. Okay. I don't see anything extra. I need to read there. Patty said, I agree with you, Teresa. I'm working on a little FPP for practice. I want to make the lion and the elephant. Yeah, I'm thinking about the lion too. Cube steak tonight. Ooh, that's good. 
Yeah, Frankenstein it together, Laura. <laughs> That's what I need to do. Oh, Kim, that doesn't sound good at all. She took some medication that um, made her sick to her stomach and left a bitter taste in, in her mouth for weeks. Well, that sounds good, June. June is cooking chicken strips and cottage cheese and peaches for supper. Jim said, I use batting pieces on scrap quilts. With all the seams, I just straight line sew batting together. Hi, Kay. How's it going? Um, well, Frankenstein is just piecing the batting together, ha you know, like you do for Frankenstein. <laughs> you know, wonky pieces. You make them work. Okay, go take a shower, Sean. <laughs> Gotta smell good for your date. Thanks for popping in. I might um, do some paper, different type of paper piecing when um, for Tiffany's paper piecing so along. Amy said, I have two Tula Pink FPP kits, a Halloween FPP, and I'm working on something with Best Bear Paw that's been sitting waiting for me to pick it back up. I won't be adding more FPP till I do all that. Yeah, that's why I'm thinking about I might not start my FPP until, um, or the elephant one until January. Hi, Don. How's it going? Yeah, I agree, Terry. She said nothing goes to waste. Everything gets pieced there. <laughs> All right, let's see. I think those will be too small for what I want to do. If I have enough, then... I'm either going to do the bow tie quilt. That's what I would like to do. But I don't have the pattern, so I need to figure out what sizes I need. Hi, JB. Oh, and I still have some of the panel left. Ooh, I could make little um, pillows out of this. Or I could incorporate it somehow in this quilt. I don't know how many pieces I have, but here's a butterfly. Two butterflies and a medallion. Hi, Laurel from Hawaii. How's everything in Hawaii? More half square triangles. Wait, looks like I got a lot of this dark blue, which could be good. So even though I'm thinking a bow tie quilt on this, it's still going to have half square triangles, possibly, in it. Crumbs there but I don't know what size I'm gonna do 
on the bow tie yet. I want to get all these out and see what kind of fabric I have left here. Because I know you need, it's a four patch. And so on the color, I could do, you know, two and a half inch square. But those would, that would make really little bow ties. So I think I want to do at least four inch. But it depends on if I can, if I have enough fabric to cut out four inch, maybe three inch or three and a half. Might be the biggest I can go. Oh, good. More white. <laughs> That's good. Could you turn them into a four patch, swap around to make a nine patch, then do a disappearing nine patch? Well, I could, but I've done that block a lot. I'm not really interested in doing a disappearing nine patch. So I do that that block quite a bit on baby quilts. Um, like when I have um, baby quilts, I usually use a, a charm pack. And I sew them up, you know, they sew up so fast. And I usually just turn them into a disappearing nine patch. So I really want to do the bow tie. <laughs> anyway, um, so with the bow tie you do white colored, colored white. And the two whites that come together, you do a sew and flip with the color, right? So you can have little squares of color. So some of these might work for that. Or I can make a whole bunch of half square triangles because I'm starting to get a pretty big pile of half square triangles here. Yeah, I think a bow tie would be really pretty. And usually in the bow tie, your four patch, uh, the colored fabric is all the same color. But I wonder what it would look like if you changed that up and didn't do all the same color. But then it probably wouldn't look like a bow tie. So more half square triangles. Oh my word, look at all these half square triangles. Okay, that's everything out of there. Lois said, my son just bought me a new book, 101 Fabulous Rotary Cutter Quilts. I bet that's cool, huh? I'm going to have to check that out. Okay, here's the blue, yellow, that one. I don't have very much of this one. But I might be able to get one bow tie out of that. There's not quite as much fabric here as I thought there was. But I, I bet you I could get a lap out of this. Hmm. That's what I was thinking, Kim. She said, do the ends the same with a different center for the bow tie. 
and they don't all have to be that way because you really the point is you want to try and get rid of as much of your these scraps as you can and so maybe some of them would be scrappy like that and some of them would be all the same color and definitely going to be able to incorporate half square triangles into that into this so I can make some pinwheels going through there too so that this will be fun got a lot of this dark blue so I could do all the little sewing flips the the little piece of the bow tie with this dark blue and the rest of it with different fabrics that might be an idea too okay there it is this is what i have Put this over there and this even though it's pretty small I have to figure out how big bow ties I can make. Yes, Terry said, just contrast. They can be different colors. No, I've never done a bow tie quilt at all, and not a 3D one either. Hi, Vicki. Hi Mel, how's it going? <laughs> Melina, how's that? <laughs> Is that closer? Can you use half square triangles to make the bow tie? Yeah, but the middle would be or part of that would be a little bit bigger. I think it would be a little bit bigger. Oops, looks like I'm spinning. <laughs> Lois said, I can't wait to see what I can make with this new book. Yeah, I gotta have to check that out. I bet you can get that on Amazon, the 101 Fabulous Rotary Cutter Quilts. So a three and a half would give you a six inch finished. Yeah. Six inch finished bow tie. little overcast in Hawaii today, but it's still 82. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you for answering that question, Sheila, uh, for Dawn. Okay. Hi, Faith. How are you doing? Yeah, Lois, it's um, super cute and it's really easy to do, the bow tie quilt is. So, so these are all the half square triangles. Now the reason I have these is because I, I didn't just, you know, cut the way they had you make it the half square triangle you drew the line um, diagonally you know and then sewed right on the line and then you cut a quarter quarter of an inch away from that so you had that 
all that extra fabric. So I just took another stitch, another seam, and that's why I ended up with so many extra half square triangles. So, or they had you make two, but you only needed one, you know. Katie said, y'all, we've been sitting around in 64 degrees the past five days in um, South Greenland. Today the winds are from the south with rain, and it's putting more of a hit on the ice cap. Ninety in Oklahoma. Oof. Uh, it was beautiful here today until the wind started blowing, but um, I don't know, I think it was about 75 maybe. I don't know, I didn't really look. I'm going to pull my hair back, get it out of my face. Okay, so I'm going to get a piece of paper out. One thing to do. And something to write with and then I'm gonna iron all these half square triangles open and then I can square them up see what size half square triangles I'm gonna have I could make pillowcase out of all the half square triangles I don't have to use them in the quilt Okay, so I'm not going to use this piece. I think I'm going to try and save this for the backing. So I'm going to put this with the quilt so I don't use it. <laughs> If I don't use it for backing, I could make a couple of pillowcases with it. That would be really cute. Kim said it's 80 here in Independence. Okay, so... Let me just go through these. So what are you guys working on today? Here's one that's going to look really strange. <laughs> oh, I got four of those. It'll be kind of interesting putting those together. Two, three, Four, I got more than four. Five, six, seven, and I have eight of them. Four that go one way and four that go the other way. It'll be interesting. I'm going to try and put these in uh, piles of, that I think are about the right same size. Hi Brandy, how are you doing? Those about the same size, yep. Yeah. Looks smaller. <laughs> so I think this will be fun. Um, 
it really, this wasn't on my to-do list, <laughs> you know, for sure. I'm making extra work, but I don't want to just, you know, I could just put it all in a bag and then put it in line, <laughs> work on something else. But sometimes you just need to do something different, <laughs> right? I still need to go through the closet for sure, figure out what's going on in, in there. But once I get all this figured out, Anybody who wants to join me doing a bow tie quilt, grab your scraps, figure out the size you're going to do. I'm not going to really have a pattern um, that I'm going off of, other than I know what a bow tie quilt looks like. So I'm not sure how big it's going to end up or anything. I'm just going to keep making bow ties until I run out of fabric. The quilt could be 100 by 100. <laughs> it's hard to say. But I don't think it'll be that big. And I could put these pinwheels together and if I decide I don't want them in the quilt, then I could use them for something else. But they could also make a really cute border. Pinwheel border. That would be cute. Hi, Zach. How's it going? Yeah, it's uh, it's been pretty hot. The sun has been um, solar flares bad. Bad, bad, bad. Heating everything up. Like here, um, my husband said, back in, oh, the 80s, when he used to come here in this town, he was a logger, and um, the snow would be like eight feet deep, easy. And that's what all the people, in fact, um, the gal that, um, from the title company, her grandparents owned this house, and she said that from the second floor deck, they used to be able to jump off into the snow. That's how high the snow would get piled up down there. And it's not like that at all. I mean, if we get four feet of snow, which sounds like a lot, but for here it's not. Um, you know, we think four, th four feet of snow is a lot. I've seen some pictures of what it used to look like here back in the 40s and stuff and how deep the snow used to be oh my god i don't know how people lived up here <laughs> so it's everything goes in cycles
I was watching, um, I didn't watch the whole thing. I just caught part of it. And they were talking about um, when they do the ice core. And um, they can look back through the years. I mean, millions of years. And see what what the environment was like during all that time. And um, like... I think this one was um, Antarctica, but they could tell by by looking through those cores that Antarctica used to be tropical because all of the, there were seeds and little plant life and this and that trapped into the, in the ice. So it was like a record of, of how the, you know, how life was in Antarctica millions of years ago or however long it was so things definitely change on the planet you know sometimes the Sun gets hotter sometimes it's not as hot I mean there's a lot of things that um, go into it It's pretty interesting. You guys ought to, if you're interested, there's a lot of documentaries about it. Things change. <laughs> that is for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and even like over in the UK, um, four or five thousand years ago, they had a massive forest there. A massive forest. And I often wonder when I watch shows, you know, like in Scotland or around UK, like Time Team, like, well, why don't they replant the trees? Because um, the people are the ones that cut them down. They didn't just die, <laughs> you know. They cut all of their trees down for to make ships and stuff and to farm. And so I wonder, you know, they're not using some of that land for farming anymore. Why don't they just plant some trees? And I think that's what needs to happen in a lot of places. We need to plant trees. We planted four trees last year, so we're trying to do our part. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's great, Katie. Oh, it is beautiful over there, Mary. It is really gorgeous. So, look at all those half square triangles I got. <laughs> that's that one size. And there's this size. And then some that are a little bit bigger. Oh, here's some others. Okay. <laughs> so I got quite a bit of half square triangles. Oh, that's interesting, Kim. There's a lake in Colorado called Iceberg Lake, right on top of Loveland Pass. It was covered in ice that never thawed, and then for like 135 years, and then it started to melt back in 
the 1980s. Hi, Deborah. Oh, good. That's why I uh, came on, is because I needed company too. <laughs> um, I agree, Faith. Yeah, we need water. And trees would help with that if we could get the trees to grow. But um, you guys could look this up too. Um, Israel has a really cool irrigation system that they came up with to be able to plant trees and um, food stuff, you know, farming and all that. And it's basically underground irrigation. And it takes a lot of work to put it in, but... Um, and plus they try to capture all of the moisture and that they can um, because like here overnight every morning we wake up and there's a dew the grass is wet and if I got some of those things that they use in Israel they put them around the trees and they have like um they dip down and so all that dew and moisture, you know, rolls down towards the tree. And plus, uh, it covers the base around the tree. And so the tree stay, stays a little moist, you know, because it's covered up. It's really interesting. Oh, that's, that's cool, Lisa. She said they planted over 50 trees. Um, I don't, oh, they're trying to remember. Um, the guy from Time Team, Tony, he did another, um, show but i can't remember what it's called and um but he he would he would go like on wa walking trips to different places and some of the places up in upper scotland where there used to be trees like in the draws and stuff the people have been um replanting that with native what they know that they had before everything was cut down and when you look at the before and the now, oh my gosh, it looks so much better. And the other thing about it is um, even though trees take up, do take up water, um, eventually, you know, they grow tall enough that they are providing shade for the, for the creeks and the waterways and the watersheds. And so even though they might start out using more water, eventually um, you're going to get more water in the creeks, especially if you uh, plant certain trees, you know. If you plant a tree that its roots just go out like that, it's going to take uh, more surface water. If you plant trees that have this root that goes straight down like poplars, um, it's a little bit better because their roots are going further down to look for water, for one thing. Uh, okay, Vicki, thanks for hanging out. We got, we're just going to hang out for another, you know, uh, until about 10 to 5, because then Becca comes on. Tap root, yeah, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I sometimes forget the words, you know. <laughs> so, one of the jobs I had was um, land management. And it was for a ranch, a big ranch. It was over 10,000 acres over in eastern Oregon. And most of that is sagebrush. And it was a working ranch, so it had cattle on it. Um, 
and there were trees in the you know in the draws where the streams were we had like four creeks and only one was year around the rest of them uh, were in intermittent so they especially in the summertime they were always there but they'd be like underground and they were still flowing and then every now and then they would come up and then they'd go back down and all that kind of stuff well i worked with um nrcs uh, natural resource services and um, fish and game people and some other groups to do some land improvements there keeping in mind that um, it was a working ranch and we were going to have cattle on it but we my goal was to get the cattle out of the creek bottom because in the summertime you know they want to be where it's cool and so they would just lay in down in the creek and you know stomp all over in it and pee and poop <laughs> all that stuff and so we put in fencing um, along the creeks but in certain areas you know I try I worked with the the person that leased the ranch and had been li living there for a long time and I talked to other people that had known that ranch and how how it operated or how it should operate so I mean I brought in a lot of people to discuss how we were going to put in the fences and the water features and you know all this stuff we didn't just go in and just change everything and then let the farmer rancher figure out how they were going to um, make it work for them. So I put we put in cattle crossings. We put in um, livestock water. We put in um, fish traps or not traps, but ladders, fish ladders. And most of it was all a government program so it, that was a fun job i had a lot of fun doing that and especially i was outside all the time on that job riding four-wheelers <laughs> it was a very cool job and i i worked there from uh, 2001 to 2012 I think and um, so after so after we put in the fencing I went along and I took photographs so many you know feet like every 150 feet or something like that along the bottom of um, it was called Daly Creek and I would take a picture looking forward and a picture going the other way and I just did that all the way up the creek wherever our fences were and livestock you know because I wanted to document before and after and so after you guys would be amazed within just two years I could not believe the difference of and I would take a picture of here's the fence on the left hand side where cows can't get in and here's what it looks like on the right hand side and on the left hand side I had it's beautiful there's grasses there's new trees coming up there's you know it's just beautiful and on the left hand side it's just dirt there's nothing you know it's dry dirt sagebrush <laughs> <laughs> so I mean uh, like in Oklahoma years ago they um, had the dust bowl and that was due to over farming you know so you I think we 
can use the um, earth responsibly. <laughs> Where everybody benefits, you know. And the other thing, um, because of doing that, we started getting more fish. We started having more water in the creek. And, um, and actually, it was better for the cows. They still had areas where they could go and get out of the heat. I mean, we kept that kind of stuff in mind, you know, because sometimes it gets pretty hot in the summer. And livestock, if they had their choice, they would rather lay down somewhere in the shade than stand somewhere out in the sun, you know. <laughs> And not only did the livestock use them, but we got a lot more wildlife out of it too. Elk and deer and all that. They would come in and use the water troughs. And they would use the livestock crossings too. So it, it wasn't like it hurt the wildlife because uh, that was the other thing we had to take into consideration is because we had an elk migration through that property and also a deer so they had certain areas so we had um, elk crossings or deer crossings so the fence would be built with the elk or deer in mind and they were put in where the elk always wanted to jump the fence or jump the gates anyway um anyway it was a neat job it really was i kind of i miss that job and I dealt with water rights and all that kind of stuff too it was a good job <laughs> for a job it was a lot of fun yeah exactly Terry said so, like me I would rather lay around in the shade <laughs> definitely who wants to lay out in the sun Um, cattle guards. We use a lot of cattle guards around here. Kim said, when we farmed, Happy let it sit fallow every seventh year. He planted rye grass or something he could turn under as a green fertilizer. Exactly. The other thing about having livestock or horses or, you know, going into the same area all the time is they're tramping on that ground and they're just compacting it. And that's one reason why nothing will grow there. And so you got to do something, um, you know, either till up the ground. That's what we did is we would till up the ground and plant, reseed it with natural grasses and um, sometimes we'd even put alfalfa and stuff in it different things that would bring nutrients back into the ground have a good night lisa i'll see you over at uh, becca's carrie said she's a city girl she knows nothing I like concrete and bricks and pavers, <laughs> and I'm just totally the opposite. I am total country. <laughs> I do not like the cities at all. <laughs> oh, no, you're kidding, Terry. She doesn't even like walking on the grass. Oh, that's terrible. You've got to get out and walk on the grass and hug a tree once in a while. <laughs> exactly, Laura. Yeah, I would rather be lost in the country than lost in the city. Because one thing, I probably wouldn't be lost if I was in the country. <laughs> Even if you dropped me off somewhere out 
in the wilderness. I think I could find my way, find my way out. I'm going to have a, a Whopper. I know I said I needed to quit eating all that sugar. It lasted about a day. <laughs> Terry said, she is surrounded by trees and grass and landscaping, so she's good. <laughs> all right, so I can set all these over at my ironing board. And get those. I only have one this size. Well, that's not true. There. That's how I like it, Brandy. She said, I live just where I have enough country to make me happy, but close enough to the city when she needs things. <laughs> Sorry, Terry. I get to sneezing around here too when the trees go to seed. The pine trees, oh my goodness. And there's this yellow pollen everywhere. It wasn't as bad this year as last year, but... And you know my crab apple tree out here? It doesn't have nearly as many crab apples on it as it did last year. So it must like uh, really produce its fruit like every fourth year. There's a few out there, but not nothing like last year. Okay, you guys, we got about maybe five more minutes. Yeah, so no crab apple jelly. I don't think so. So I'm going to do up these half square triangles. Then I'm going to look up the bow tie quilt and kind of figure out what size I want to do for the main uh, four patch, the color part of the four patch. I'm thinking I might be able to do um, three and a half. It's two and a half because the smaller pieces I can use for the smaller part of that. So oh I'm sorry Terry. <laughs> I love peanut butter M and M's too. <laughs> But when I buy those, I can eat the whole bag. I got Lois attached to him, too. Oh, she's sitting there eating peanut butter M&M's. <laughs> Crickets are deafening. <laughs> the other thing I love about being in the country is we can actually see the stars. I love seeing the nighttime sky. It's so bright and shiny, and this is just Beautiful. Now Terry has to find a snack. Well, try to find something healthy. <laughs> Sorry, Lois. I didn't mean to do that to you. So, what I might try and do is work on this quilt, the bow tie quilt, on Friday afternoon like this. Come on before Becca. Um, try and come on about 2 o'clock probably though. 
we'll see and work on this quilt specifically I think Friday works out okay <laughs> Lois said it's, it's all good they're my favorite now yeah Becca's going to be on in just a few minutes hi Kathy So, I'm thinking about cutting the prints at three and a half, and then so my I'm going to have to need I will need whites at three and a half. I think that's what I'm going to do. In fact, I'm just going to plan on it. So I'm going to cut out squares at three and a half for my prints. And then three and a half squares for whites. And I'm just going to go through all my scrappy whites and cut up a bunch of three and a half. And then I need to figure out what the little bow tie piece is going to be. Um, would it be about half of three and a half? Maybe I'll have to look. Maybe a two inch square? Or does it need to be smaller than that? Uh, half of three is one and a half. One, one and three quarters. I'll have to do a mock-up. And see what that would look like. There, there, there. Okay. There's a four patch. So I think uh if I want it to be right in the half of the three and a half, then I would want to do one and three quarters. So, so I need to cut up a whole bunch of print fabric at one and three quarters. Or if you want that little piece of the bow tie to be a little bit bigger, maybe just go ahead and do two inch. Yeah, I think two inch would probably look all right too. So one and three quarters or two inch. Two inch might be easier. And I think I have a lot of pieces here that are at least two inches. But maybe this one is one and yeah, this strip is one and three quarters. So maybe I'll I guess I will do one and three quarters. I wish I had a little more of this stuff, but I think I might, there's probably enough to do one bow tie in that. It's going to be a lot that looked like this, <laughs> but that's okay. And then I have a lot of dark blue. So, hi Jenny. How's it going? Okay, you guys, it's 10 till 5 o'clock. So I'm going to go go ahead and go. <laughs> so if you want to sew along with the, with me on, on Friday afternoons, grab your stuff or grab a different project and um, we'll sew together. Doing this bow tie. 
and uh, or just hang out and listen and visit in the chat. Doing some needlepoint. That works too, Mary. <laughs> so, I know. I'm sorry. I'll try to schedule them going forward so you get a, a notice. How's that? Um, but if you want to visit more and be on a live, so Becca is going live in about 10 minutes. So <laughs> it was awesome having you guys here and I will talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye for now. Love you guys.